always used to say that as long as when you come out of the cinema you just stop for a split second and you think what you just saw and uh, that's kind of enough for me in a way um, because uh, it's terribly individualistic but it's also important sometimes to paint a picture which uh, the audience didn't know about you know to open up a new kind of kind of beings or a magical box and, and uh, to see into a world in order to direct and in order to make something really good you have to touch each other very deeply and you have to be very deeply connected and a lot of directors who direct uh, from the outside and uh, they kind of dictate you know and then some wonderful directors really work from the inside so the actors don't even notice that they're being directed because it's 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 it's, it's a joint effort and and uh, I think actors are the most magical instruments you know uh, and and um, you know you create the most wonderful relationship which lasts for a lifetime and uh, so when that's what I remember about my movies you know the incredible times we had together and the laughter and the dramas and then what we created and how successful how it succeeded and how some of the movies are still being played after 30, 35 years, 40 years and it still creates I think that's the most gratifying part of it that after all that time uh, you could dig out an old print of your movie and put it into a cinema and see a new audience who knew nothing about it respond to it in a wonderful way. I did my first movie in 1968 and then uh, I was directing and I was doing some pretty kind of major films with old Peter O'Toole and Alan Blades and Gander Jackson and George C. Scott and uh, some wonderful wonderful actors and I had the chance to work with Robert Shaw and Oliver Reed and Richard Burton and, and like all the great English classical kind of epic actors and uh, but I dreamt about making movies when I was in Hungary when I was like six or seven years old and uh, years and years later I went back to Hungary to do a version of Hunchback of Notre Dame with uh, Mandy Potemkin and Richard Harris and Selma Hayek and it's the first time uh, I was actually working in Hungary when as a kid I was dreaming about making movies. So when I finished the film, uh, I remember I uh, booked myself on the first plane out of Hungary. And the actual fact that you, know, you could get on the plane uh, and, and, and get on first class, you know, because it was a film's budget and all that, uh, and fly out of at your own choice whatever time you need to go. But while the plane took off from Budapest and uh, uh, took off at like 6 a.m. in the morning and I looked down and that was my hometown and uh, suddenly the tears started rolling down my face and I said to myself, what, what are you, what's wrong, you know? And I realized that, that second that uh, I finally my, achieved my ambition of my life which was to actually make a film in those cobblestone streets in Budapest you know which I did on this Hunchback of Notre Dame you know and it didn't matter that uh, nothing came up to it uh, in my crazy mind as far as an achievement of working in England or, or uh, getting awards, you know, for the, my craze movie for best director and this and that and that. It, none of it mattered as much as it did for me to actually track down those streets, you know, where I was dreaming about making films when I was a child, you know. And uh, this whole recognition came to me on, during this flight out of Hungary at six in the morning, you know. And probably that, that was my happiest second of my life to say to myself, you big idiot, you finally achieved what you always wanted to do and you didn't even recognize it, you know, while you were there doing it, you know. So it was an incredible moment, you know.
If it's in your blood directing, you know, you never stop directing. And it doesn't matter that you're alone in your mind, you're dreaming or imagining things, but you're always making a movie.